Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And today we're looking at a post-rotation standard build of Volcanion. Now there's many ways we can try and play Fire in the new formats. There's been Salazzle that was popularised by Yaneda, an absolute legend of the game at Worlds. He finished ninth, I believe, uh, bubbled um, the top 8. And uh, he came up with a really interesting like heavy Kiawe Ho-Oh with the Salazzle GX as the backup. There's also more traditional Volks like Ryan Sablehouse's... Um, Brooklet Hill Starmie build, but today I'm bringing you something slightly different even still because it's going to be an Octillery build. Myself and Jack, I remember we played Octillery maybe like a year ago, like right at the start of the season a year ago, um, and I feel like because we have lost Versus Seeker, Octillery is in a good place right now because you can top up your hand size and end proof yourself much better than you can do um, by playing something like Starmie. I'll go into Octillery in a bit more detail in a moment, but for now, let's get on to the archetype. So, Volcanion, this is like a very old school traditional build of Volcanion. It has a few of the tech new GX attackers, um, but it is traditionally still power heater early, set up your big dudes, get swinging for the easy prizes. So, uh, big one hit knockout deck still, and we have Octillery to top up our hand size and end proof ourselves in the late game. So, that is the whole concept of the deck. So, We'll start off with Noni X Volcanion. Um, this is actually, in my opinion, the strongest card in Volk. This is the reason why Volk has done so well. Um, this power heater attack is still crazy, crazy good. Doing 20 base for a single fire, and you're able to attach uh, a fire to two of your different bench Pokemon is so good in this game. It's amazing efficiency, and when you can power up the early turns with Steam Up, you are oftentimes getting knockouts on lower HP basic Pokemon. There are tons of them out there right now. Beldum, of course, has weakness. Uh, we have Alolan Vulpixes. There are still Rowlets running around. There are Rolts. There's all sorts of low HP Pokemon that we can prey on for just one energy and really start tempoing out, initiating the race, whilst at the same time powering up big attackers on the bench to start swinging on their more powerful Pokemon. As we've seen... Um, lots of these big GX Pokemon start as little 60 HP Pokemon, so while you're powering up Turtonators and Ho-Oh's on the bench, uh, for the big scrap later on, you've got a Noni X in the active, taking prizes and initiating the race, which is really, really strong for you. I think since Kiawe came out, a lot of people have shied away from Baby Volk and just said, you know, we'll go for Kiawe instead. I think it, Baby Volk is so, so good. Like, it's the reason why Volk is great. Uh, so I'm sticking with the three count. It's still an amazing card. And the way I like to play Volcanion, it's like really heavy on Baby Volk. So I think he's nuts. Uh, we also have Steam Artillery for three fire, deals 100. This is actually a fine number as well. Uh, one Steam Up gets you over things like Trash Launch uh, Garbodor. It knocks out um, Garbotoxin Garbodor as well. The single hit, you can have like Fury Belt and Steam Up. So even one hit knockout things like Lele's. So... Uh, Steam Artillery is still really good, very efficient, and there's a lot of decks that don't like hitting 130, let alone 170 on a non EX, because oftentimes decks need things like Choice Band to hit those perfect numbers. So he's just a really, real big problem, and for a single prize Pokemon, he is like absurdly good. He's the reason why Volt's good, in my opinion. So we're going to play three of him still, even with like the Kiawe that I've snuck in as well. So then we have three Volcanian EX. This is the ugly promo art. Sorry about that. But it is one of the reasons why this is potentially a cheap deck for some people to get. Because you can get three of this guy fairly cheaply. And the other EXs, sorry, the other GX Pokemon other than Lele aren't that pricey either. Um, it's a 180 HP fire and water type, making the mirror match just an absolute joke, really, because you're both swinging with these guys each time. Um, but it is... Pretty cool having two typings. Um, you can hit a few other decks for weakness. There's only really other fire archetypes, but Ho-Oh Salazzle. Um, obviously Ho-Oh is weak to lightning, which is important now in mirrors, so it's less of a joke than it used to be. But um, the fire typing, it's still going to be really good for uh, Metagross GX, because that is traditionally a tanking deck, and it can't really stand up to the likes of Volk, which is really good. It has the ability Steam Up, which is the main reason why we use this card. Well, actually, its attack is good as well, but... This is one of the big factors of why Volcanion has been so popular. Once during your turn, you may discard a fire energy card from your hand. If you do, during this turn, your basic fire Pokemon's attacks deal 30 more damage to your opponent's active. 
This stacks for each other Volcanian EX steam up we can use. So as long as we have plenty of fire energy throughout the game, we can power up our attacks, pushing our power heaters into one shots on lower HP Pokemon, as I've already mentioned. And it pushes some of our late game attackers like ho and Turtonator into one hit KOs. He's not too shabby as an attacker himself. For two fire and a colorless, you deal 130. And this Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. That's mitigated by the switches, the float stones, and the high Guzma count that we play. Um, it shouldn't be too big of an issue, even then you can pay retreat if it's a dire need. Um, but yeah, Volcanic Heat can even push itself into one shots again with Fury Belt and one Steam Up. So like just having the one Volcanian EX on the board means he can KO Lele's with the support of Fury Belt. So uh, very, very good card and um, is sort of like the back bonus deck because he is powering up all your dudes to get one hit KOs. And that's the whole premise of this deck. You're trying to race very efficiently with the early turns. And then move into big late game swings as well, which is pretty cool for you. So we have two orbs of both of these different attackers. And let's talk about why these are so integral. I'll start off with ho -Oh GX. It's a 190 HP fire type. And its weakness is one of the big selling points here. It's weak to lightning. And simply not being weak to water is really important for you. Because Greninja is an awkward archetype otherwise. And having ho -Oh in here gives us hope against that archetype. Especially because Phoenix Burn, its main attack for three fire and a colorless deals 180. So Greninja's can't really Shadow Stitch against us now because uh, we can still hit 180 over their breaks, which is something that we couldn't do previously as Volk. So now, in theory, you can race early with Power Heaters, and then when they start getting into their break evolutions, you can throw ho -Oh's at them and actually get through them quite efficiently. I don't think Greninja is your worst matchup as a Volcanian player, strangely enough, because we have ho -Oh to fall back on now. In general, Phoenix Burn is nuts just against a bunch of other decks as well. 180 is a perfect baseline for things like Drampers, Tapu Bulus, because of course they don't have weakness. And this is going to be really important because it has a 4 energy cost. And specifically against Garbodor decks, Ho-Oh is a staple because we are able to Kiawe onto it and get itself powered up in a single turn without using any items at all. And when you're not using any items, that's really crazy good actually. Phoenix Burn, very, very good attack. It also has Sacred Fire for a Fire and 2 Colorless, which deals 50 to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Uh, remember, oh sorry, it, one of any of their Pokemon, so it can go active, and that's an important note because again, you can power this up with Steam Ups, you can have the Fury Belt on top. So again, this can be fairly quickly dealing with like 60 HP Pokemon in the active, um, or other things like Diancies and such. Without doing a big burnout attack, you can go for Sacred Fires in the early game, and again, keep pressuring things. So we have two options. We can either be going for early... Power Heaters for prizes against lower HP stuff, or we could go turn on Kiawe onto Ho-Oh or Turtonator. He also has a decent early game attack. And we can start firing off things like Sacred Fire with backups from Steam Up or Fury Belt. Um, we can also be threatening lower HP Pokemon, so bear this in mind as well. It has a GX attack, but I really wouldn't read it. You will never use it in this game because Turtonator's GX attack is way stronger. Um, I mean, it puts <laughs> three in any combination of Fire, GX, and EX from your discard pile onto your bench. Like, I don't know what situation you'd have to be in to use this attack. It's terrible tempo. It really is just bad in all circumstances. So don't use this GX attack. It's just the other two things that you have it in the deck for. But those things alone are very good, especially the 10 extra HP, which Ho-Oh and Turtonator both share. And this is really good for things like Espeon and also uh, Dramper itself. So really good to have this amount of HP. The other attacker is Turtonator GX. He is overall, I think, a better attacker than Ho-Oh. In general, like against almost every deck, you'll try and get a Turtonator set up because he's just really cool and his GX attack is actually super relevant. Again, he has the 190 HP, which is good for a bunch of different reasons. Again, he has a potentially early game option in Shell Trap uh, for two colors, deals 20 during your opponent's next turn. If this Pokemon is damaged by an attack, even if it's knocked out, put eight damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. Um, this is really good against, again, non EX things where you can do steam ups in the early turns, again, with Fury Belt support. Like one Steam Up, one Fury Belt, you're doing the 60 and if they are bringing in new attackers just to like tap you, um, you can have Shell Trap dealing damage back to them. Even if they come in with something like a Gardevoir GX, they'll be taking 8 and that sets them up for future attackers. So Shell Trap is a very good early game option, again against some of these heavy GX decks. Uh, we then have Bright Flame, which is another big blowout attack. For two Fire and a Colorless, we deal 160. And discard two fire energy attached from this pokemon again i'll bring up fury belt pushes us to 170 which is a great number and we have steam up to fall back on also 
Uh, so we are going to be able to ramp this even further. And one of the best parts of this card actually is that it does discard fire. Normally it's a downside, but against specifically Guardi, it's important because you become uh, pretty much the best option in the matchup because you have the most survivability when you're taking energy off your Pokemon. You can see uh, on the weaknesses to the right of me, uh, or just below me actually, um, you can see that everything has a high attack cost. Ho-Oh has a four attack cost to use its main attack, and Turtonator and Volk both have three attack costs, but Bright Flame discards from self. And discarding that basically minuses 60 damage that the Guardi is able to hit against you, which means they're the ones committing more attachments, and that means that you can respond on them with like a Lele even sometimes. So Bright Flame is going to be a good option against Guardi specifically, and uh, in general he is again a good one-hit KO machine. And let's not forget his GX attack, it is basically a win condition at times in this deck, uh, because he is fantastic reload for your dudes. Nitro Tank GX for a single fire, attach 5 fire energy cards from your discard pile onto your Pokemon in any way that you like. This is incredible, he can set himself back up ready to go, and at the same time setting up Baby Volks, Volky Xs, and Ho-Oh GX even. Um, he basically floods your board back full of energy, so it allows you to be aggressive tempo-wise, it allows you to do early Kiar way, Nitro Tank mid-game, finish things off late-game, so he's a great reload for you, and that is just really cool to make sure that we have enough energy throughout the game. Even if we don't have much of a hand size, we can still Nitro Tank and be in a good spot, so Turtonator, a very good card indeed. Le next up we have the 3 Tapu Lele GX. I like the 3 count because... Um, even though bench space is kind of tight, you want to have access to this because you want to use the right supporter in the right occasion. Sometimes it's going to be Kiawe on turn one, so having decent odds of having turn one Kiawe is going to be important. Um, at the same time, you're just getting the right ones in the right spots. You can see a high counts of the ones we do play, so just maximizing the consistency is going to be helpful. And uh, it can also be an attacker, a two energy attacker no less, which is pretty good for the deck because normally the attack costs are higher, so when you're um, sort of behind on board, maybe you can just attach one to a Lele and threaten like a two hit on something, which is pretty cool for you, especially if you have early game power heaters behind you, uh, dealing like 90 or stuff like that, that can be really good, because energy drive is still a powerful option, so bear in mind Lele is actually a really efficient attacker as well in this deck, so uh, yeah, pretty important to note. Next up, r uh, the Octillery, first of all just the Stadium Remoraid of course, and Octillery itself. The Sushi Master is getting the nod in our archetype because it just gains so much value. Now that Versus Seeker's gone, N is so much stronger against these sorts of aggressive decks um, that the outs that we used to have to win the game, oftentimes you need like Guzma for game or like energy, energy for game. And I guess Starmie used to be the sort of steam up your way to game, which, you know, you still have the option for, but... Um, specifically looking for like Versus Seeker for game or Guzma for game. Now that Versus Seeker's gone, you essentially have, in theory, four less outs to win game in the late game. So now we are going to have Octillery to fall back on so that the N to 1 is now an N to like 5. And in those 5 cards, you're hoping to draw into one of your Guzmas or your other outs to win the game. So having the Octillery really allows us to be aggressive and not be punished for it as much in the late game whilst also ticking over in the mid game because we have less physical supporters available um, because Versus Seeker's gone. So even if you're a hand without supporters, which is much more common now that we only play, you know, we only play seven draw supporters in the whole deck and we don't have Versus Seeker, whereas previously we would have those seven plus four, now we have Octillery in here instead to try and stabilize the hand, make sure we can keep cycling, drawing into cards. So Sushi Master is a real pro in this deck, and it has synergy with Brooklyn Hill, just like Starmie does, so it's pretty easy to get going fairly early on. So just supplements the hand in general, and it's great end proofing, which I really like in Volcanion because it likes to go aggressive, as we all know. So let's look at the items. You can see I've just got two ofs of everything, and then four ofs of Ultra Ball, because Ultra Ball is insane. So yeah, four Ultra Ball, grabs Lele for Kiawe, grabs all of your one of Pokemon, uh, grabs Octillery, also lowers the hand size for Octillery to keep drawing with Abyssal Hand, just good in every circ every circumstance, which is pretty good. And then two odds of everything else, which are important in the deck. Uh, we're going to have two Max Elixir, I've said the attack costs are heavy, so with Power Heater support, Nitro Tank and Elixir, you will naturally be able to use all these attacks, even though they are expensive. Gives you that little bit of extra ramp in the early turns, which is nice. 
Uh, two switch as well as two float stones. Going to be good for the maneuverability because everything is hefty in the deck. Turtle has three retreat. Uh, Volk has three retreat. And then the rest have two retreat costs except for Lele and Remoraid. But pretty much everything's chunky. So having these four outs plus three Guzma means we're not going to be stuck so much. Um, I like having a fairly high float stone counts because they're insta play for Abyssal Hand. So that's why I don't just have like lots of switch or lots of escape ropes. I like having the split. Uh, two field blower, pretty important, seeing as though abilities are integral. Steam up is going to be useful in a bunch of matchups. But bear in mind that we have Ho-O that can still blow up pretty much everything without abilities, um, other than things like Espeon, I guess. So field blower as the two of, it enables auxiliary, it enables steam up. They are important for sure, uh, but I don't feel we need to have any more than a two count from my experience so far with the deck. Uh, two energy retrieval. This is like a long lost card in the deck since everyone moved over to Starmie. Uh, because we're not playing Starmie, we're going to play retrievals instead. There's potential for Fisherman, but it's just super slow. And when you can't versus Seeker Fisherman, I feel like we'd rather have instant access. And energy retrieval allows that. So welcome back to energy retrieval into the deck. Um, naturally, because we've lost versus Seeker, we're still already playing like a lower item count than we used to be as Volk. So we don't mind that we're adding in like two more items that previously weren't in the deck. So energy retrieval, good card in the deck. I like the two of it is access to fire and that's pretty much all you need in like the mid game. Um, and then two fighting fury belt. I really want to work, if there's a card that I want three of, there's two cards that I want three of in this deck. One's a fury belt for sure. That's my 61st card like every time. Also a third field blower just to be like super safe. Um, but for now I don't see a cut. Um, if you only have access to two Lele, potentially that's something you can add in, a third Fury Belt. I know it's like a weird swap, but Fury Belt is definitely a card that I look for a lot. Um, I like having the two of, because its numbers are just great. It forces like one less steam up in a bunch of situations, pushes Volcanic Heat to KO Lele's for just one steam up. Um, it pushes um, all sorts of numbers, like Bright Flame can knock out without steam up support as well on Lele. Um, so yeah, it's just a really good card and it's health buff, which is also helpful against like Guardi, forces field blowers on Turtonators and stuff. Really good on Baby Volk. It's also good for just having one attack, one steam up to hit 60 uh, with Power Heater. So the numbers that it fixes are so good. I really want to find a third. I think Brooklyn Hill is something I'm going to talk about in a moment. Maybe that goes to the two count for the th uh, third Fury Belt. I'm really trying to work in Fury Belt. Um, I think also because we have high Guzma, maybe I could cut to one switch. I think it's a bit cheeky, but it could be something that I'd go for as well. Really want to work in a third Fury Belt in this list. That's the one thing that's like tilting me uh, because it's such an important card and hopefully the games show off why it's important. Um, and we're playing this over Choice Band because the numbers that we would help with Fury Belt are more helpful than they would be of Choice Band, it turns out. And the health gain also can just force people to have an extra answer at times. And when decks have to end this deck because we you know, race ahead in prizes so quickly. When they're ending, they're less likely to hit all these pieces at once because they're also probably drawing less cards than like Sycamore, for example. So yeah, um, Fury Belt is something I really want to work more in. Currently, we're playing three Brooklyn Hill. It has such a deck for a basic water or fighting. We're only playing water Pokemon. So this accesses Remoraids and Volk EXs. Both really important cards. Establishing artillery as quickly as possible is just going to be a nice safety net for you. And Volk EX being able to access this card as quickly as possible is also very good because Steam Up is important, as I've already mentioned, for the early turn Power Heaters and just in general having it on the board even to attach to with Power Heater. So I like having the three count. Potentially you could go to two. I think it's a bit cheeky, especially because you want to Kiawe as well. And Volk, he's not like the perfect Kiawe target. But imagine if you just led with like Remoraid or Baby Volk. You don't want to Kiawe onto either of those, but you could Kiawe onto Volk EX. So Brugler Hill... It's a really nice search card. It works really nicely with Octillery. You could go to two, see how it goes. Depends on how important you find Fury Belt. But for now, um, sticking with this split this way around. So yeah, going to play the one of Kiawe. Um, a lot of people play two or more. I think if it's like the Ho-Oh Salazzle build, it's much more reasonable to play a high count because you're like all in on Ho-Oh. The way I like to play the deck, as I've already mentioned, this is my favorite part of the whole deck, like by far. I will go for Baby Volk in so many matchups because it's so good. Um, so I feel like there are situations where you need to Kiawe, but it's only exactly against like Drampa Garb or like Garb Necrozma 
Uh, mainly Garbodor decks because you just get everything onto the board without using items. Um, and in general, like there are some decks that you know someone goes Lele pass, you can be like Ha Kiawe, game next turn. Do what can you do about that? But at the same time, if they have Lele active, it can punish you because they can just DC and bop you back. But yeah, so overall, Kiawe is only good in very specific spots, in my opinion. Um, so I think we only want the one of because there are plenty of games where you don't use this card at all, and he'll just be Ultra Ball fodder. But yeah, having the option is important because it's insane ramp when we need it. Uh, 3M, some nice shuffle draw. It's a pretty good consistency card. Um, when we have our own artillery, we don't mind disrupting our opponent's hand because we can fill up our own hand uh, even if we are ending ourselves low. 3 Guzma, being able to access the bench is of course important. Now that Versus Seeker's gone, we are going to play the 3 count. I've debated 4. I've debated going between uh, 4 Guzma and just having 2N. Things are a bit cheeky, you can have some bad hands, but you can play around with it if you feel like you're consistent enough with Artillery to fall back on. It basically prioritises Brooklyn Hill to always get a Remoraid, uh, but that's kind of fine. Uh, but yeah, Guzma, really strong, accessing the bench, switching our chunky Pokemon, it's good in so many spots. And uh, finally the four Sycamore aggressive draw is still going to be nice for hitting our combo, getting our bench full, uh, getting into energy retrievals, getting into more physical fires, just good all-round stuff. And then finally, 13 fire. People float between 13 and 14. I think for all the things I wanted to fit in, I've gone for the 13 count. I think it's a fine count. Even if you key our way, you still have decent enough odds for going for max elixirs. It's basically like when Yveltal played 4 DCE, 9 dark. You have the same odds. So don't overthink that 13 is not enough. 13 is still plenty of energy and we have retrievals to fall back on as well. So uh, I think it's plenty to get you through the game. And yeah, that is going to be it for the list. Let's talk about some alternatives. So the big one is Starmie. Um, I tried Starmie out and I found when you don't have Versus Seeker, you will be end out of the game so often. Uh, you'll always have access to energy, of course, but you'll just be end out of the game, I think, way too many times. Uh, and it's just really bad for you. Um, the benefits of Starmie over Octillery is that Star U has free retreat, so you can get into your attacker much more effectively because you have an extra uh, good lead in the deck. Um, but yeah, I think Octillery is just the superior option now that we've lost versus Seeker. I just like it a lot more. It's a lot cleaner. But I mean, you could still go to the Starmie route if you're like a huge fan of it. The other one is Salazzle. I know it's like a completely different deck and I'll probably have to profile it in that regard. Like it's a separate entity. Uh, but have this card in mind. There is a build that's heavier on Kiawe, heavier on Ho-Oh, and then uses Salazzle to finish off games because Diabolical Claws gets much stronger after having early pressure turns with like a big ho oh so um yeah salazzle is an option um that some fire players will be going for i won't really call them volk players because it's a different entity in itself there's a few other cards that i've already kind of touched on but why am i not playing them fisherman's an option uh we're playing retrievals instead because it's a little bit better a little bit cleaner Sky is a card that I've also kind of liked in the deck. Um, I don't have space. Maybe you cut the M count even lower. You could play just like one or two. Fit in like one or two Skylers because Skylers is actually important for grabbing like Field Blower on specific turns. Retrieval, it's also really good for grabbing your tools as well. Switching outs, all these good things. Skylar is going to be a nice little card that gets you the specifics and gets you out of bad spots. Speaking of getting you out of bad spots, Acer Roller could be cool. It picks up a damaged Pokemon puts the fire energy back into the hand to steam up immediately or to reattach immediately. It's kind of a cute card when you're not playing versus Seeker. I think it's a mu much less good card. Another one that we could think of, a lot of people are trying the Mallow Artillery Engine. Uh, Volt could try and do the same. Typically, because you take so many prize cards, your hand is oftentimes over five cards. So Mallow actually doesn't get full value. And that's why we're not playing Mallow, because your hand size is already too high in many situations. Uh, whoops, didn't try and type that. Uh, one thing I did try out, talking about the Starmie, I tried a heavy Scorched Earth Starmie build because essentially that's like almost like an Oranguru really, where you discard a card, um, get your two Space Beacon fires energies to hand, then you Scorched Earth draw two more. I tried that as an option, so if you're not a fan of Artillery, if you just really like Starmie instead, I would probably switch out Brooklyn Hills for Scorched Earth. It means that you're slightly slower getting the Starmie out, but the late game value is like great end proofing. So instead of just playing more supporters, I feel like it's important to um, have either Artillery or like Scorched Earth Starmie because N is so bad for you in the late game as the Volk player. It doesn't count as a draw card basically. So 
even if you increase your end count to four, it doesn't actually help you out because it's a card that you actually don't want to see later on. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Volk. I've tested a bit of it. Um, I actually quite like it, you know. It's just simple and it gets the job done. And with Octillery, it's a lot less YOLO. So I actually like that it's more like a setup deck with Octillery in the back. It's pretty cool. And I like its early pressure still. As you all know, I'm like a sort of early pressure player. I like being controlling and affecting the board and preventing the opponent from getting their optimal setup. So it fits my play style, even though previously I've like hated Volk. It's actually sort of like winning me over, which is kind of scary. <laughs> but yeah. I've talked a lot and let's get into some games. Looks like straight away we have the Guardi. So we're going to see if we can get Baby Volk going, start setting up some turtles and uh, see how that approach works for us. Guardi is one of the more difficult matchups. It's something that puts a few Volcanian players off playing it all together. Um, but we're going to try and do our best here. The opponent looks like they have Mulligan. It is indeed. Ooh, they are playing uh, Sylveon as well. Sylveon kind of can be annoying compared to like Volpix's because we can't power heater as effectively for knockouts. So, yeah. Right. We're not going to use Lele because we already have Sycamore. We don't really need Blower in the matchup and we don't need. Well, we kind of do. We don't need Lele right now. They lead Lele. So we have both Turtles. We have. Brooklyn Hills prize, that's fine. We're not going to key our way this turn for sure. Uh, okay. We're going to grab Baby. And we're also going to go ahead and grab Turtonator. The reason we do this is because Remoraid and Volk EX are much more searchable with the Brooklyn Hills that we know we have. So we'll play our hand and we'll just Sycamore straight away. Looks like it's just going to be Energy Pass. Actually, Energy Retreat Pass. Yeah, that's fine. It's really not bad. So there is Rolts. They are going to attach. Do they have the Wondrous Bridget? Surprisingly, they attached active. It means they probably uh, they didn't attach active. It probably means that they don't have access to uh, Vulpix. So yeah, we're going to see the Guzma trying to store us and a Draining Kiss for ten. That's actually a really annoying ten damage because it pushes us like one energy closer to um, getting knocked out by Guardi. So that's a pretty intelligent ten damage from our opponent. Um, we can't really get good steam up here because we don't have Fury Belt. Otherwise, we could Float Stone, Brooklet, Steam Up, Fury Belt. But this is where we immediately want the third. Uh, we all just do this. Grab a Remoraid. I think it's going to be a poke for 20. This does allow our opponent to get their own Vulpix down. But I kind of want them to have an army of basic Pokemon. Okay, there's the rare candy. So Guardi is here. Looks like they just shuffled the Brooklyn Hill. They didn't want anything. They have the Field Blower. They decide to keep both float stones on our dudes, and they're gonna play the end. Not bad. So, how many rods can they get on board? There's an Eevee. Hmm. 
Let's see an Ultra Ball. I imagine this will be for a Rolts. If they don't already have access to one. Yep, looks like Rolts coming down. And Infinite Force for 60. Ooh, Toxic Volk is pretty nice. Means we can get a cheeky steam up in before the Sycamore. We're actually not far away from getting the KO here. Ooh, that makes life harder. Means we need to find a switch card now. And we only have two physical switch in the deck because we have two float stones attached. Um, the alternative is just go for a power heater turn. And really set up this Guardi. I don't mind if they Ace Roller because they don't really do anything. If they Ace Roller go into Sylveon, don't mind that. So instead of trying to set up the big one shot and potentially whiff, we're just going to go more conservative here. We would need Volk Energy Switch card. And that's like a lot, kind of. Instead, we'll just go a lot more progressive. I definitely want to have both Volks on the board because they can threaten a one shot. Or we can finish off this guy at least. And we can spread our energy around this way. We'll get another steam up in. It's going to lower the hand size. We're going to attach one to a Volk. The Abyssal Hand. And you can see that we're much more progressive this way. Uh, another. Elixir. What are we thinking? I don't mind it. Okay, both elixirs fail us, but I mean, we did have a few uh, already committed. So we want to not attach to Turtle. We want to attach one to Ho Oh and one to Volk EX. Not going to make the Fury Belt right now. I don't think it's too integral. I don't feel like they're going to be doing a Guzma play this turn because they don't really have the hand for it. Yeah, it's going to be a Sycamore. Another Rolts. There's a Super Rod. Let me get back some Guardi pieces. Great thing here is they actually have to commit more to the active if they want to get the knockout. Yeah, looks like they're going to manually attach the DCE. No secret springs either, so they're definitely in a bit of a pickle now. We'll go into our floatstone turtle. We will retrieval. Now we're going to commit Fury Belt because we only need 130 here. And now it forces like Candy Guardi Energy DCE Field Blower. We can also commit a baby vault, uh, sorry, a turtonator, just to draw an extra card. Could also have thought about steam up there, but I kind of like having energy in the hand because they are helpful. And now we'll go for volcanic heat. That is an Eevee. Um, you can see Super Rod from the opponent. It's fine. They played double Rod. That's interesting. A lot of recovery cards. Here comes Energy Evolution. So unless they have like... Yeah, they don't have much going for them. Let's see the Bridget. Yeah, very slow. They play Fairy Garden as well. Very interesting build of Guardi. Not traditional. To say that much. <laughs> and 
they get a magical ribbon for three. So, we're just going to Guzma Lele here. And we're going to steam up. Attack with this Volky X. I think that's the best thing to attack with. Uh, we can... Do I need to get this attachment in? I think I want to get the attachment in. Keeping steam ups around is also potentially really good. Where our last prize is coming from? It's coming from here, right? I think we just keep the retrieval around. Okay, we're two away. The opponent probably has a crazy turn because they had ribbon, so they can go for like big cardi guardy candy, energy DC blower N. That's literally what they need this turn. But with ribbon, it's all possible. So let's have a look. There's the candy guardy. There's letter. So that's two energy. They could even go for like a Guzma Plea GX, getting both our Volk and Turtonator. No, they're going to attach to the active. Reasonable. They're going to Secret Spring once. And they're having a debate if they want to Secret Spring again. If they Secret Spring again, it basically means they need another Candy Guardy and Energy. And they've already played two Candies, so it's probably not very good. They probably need to hope to hit DCE. Oh my goodness. My goodness, they need a lot here. That's their third Candy gone, so I think we're actually surviving this. Okay, there's Field Blower. That's a piece. Gonna get rid of both Fury Belts, reasonable. Choice Band, uh, yeah, they had Choice Band as well. I forgot Choice Band. Okay. So we'll bring up a Floatstone dude. And this time I think we need to Baby Vault. Because we need to set up multiple threats this turn. If I just come in with this guy, hit 190, it's not great. I think it has to be Baby Volk. Let's have a look. I think it's going to be Baby Volk. I'm going to steam up if it lets us. <clears throat> Hopefully it lets us. There we go. This gets the most threats into play, which is like the most important thing. We're going to try and end our opponent out so maybe they can't knock out the... Wow, it's getting super laggy. Okay. Ending our opponent and ourselves down. But we have artillery, remember. It's one of the big selling points of artillery. That we're able to do this as a Volk player and actually not, like, end the game for ourselves. I could also have Nitro tanked. Maybe Nitro Tank was best, but this actually like sets up a lot of energy. So, how safe am I against Guzma? Not very safe. 
3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So he'd need two energy and Guzma all in hand. No way, he'd need energy Guzma from hand. We're going to try and make it as hard as possible. I don't think we'll ever whiff energy. So they can evolve into Curlia. And they're going to respond with N. Secret Spring once. DCE. They actually do get the knockout. I think the knockout actually helps us. He could go for Twilight GX. No. Okay. I think that knockout actually helps us. Oh, that's game. Didn't need Octillery. I mean, we could have thinned a lot of cards. We could have thinned here. And then we have all the Sycamore draws and everything else. Yeah, we had a lot of draws to win there. Nice, and Sushi Master did put in work, not on the last turn, but the turn before that. It allowed us to be annoying and end them. I think the Nitro Tank was actually better the turn I used Baby Volk. I opened up a way to lose the game, but we still got there. I should have Nitro Tanked like one to the active, set up the bench, and then I could also have set up Ho-Oh, -Oh, one away. So yeah, that was kind of too greedy on my part, but we got away with it. Still learning Volk. As you, as you know, it's a deck that I've previously not liked, so actually some of the intricacies I can still flop on, but yeah. We are going to carry on here. Flip the coin. We win it. Which is nice. And we'll see what we're up against. I didn't look at the... Uh, the typing. Lele start, huh? I actually quite like having two Baby Volk on my board. Do I? Uh, it really does depend what he's playing. We'll attach an energy. I'm happy enough to end. We'll get an energy in the discard pile. Uh, I think in general Turtle is a good thing to go for, but so is Volk. Uh, it's so easy to find Volks though with Brooklet. Hmm. Uh, we'll just get a Volky X. He can get another energy in the discard, which is like the main thing. Thin's an extra card for us. Get two in there to guarantee a good power heater. We do have an elixir, which we can fire off now, which is pretty cool. Nice. And it's not a bad turn one. We can end it there. Until we learn more from our opponent's deck. There is a nice Bulu and also a Remoraid. Gonna pass. No Grubbins down. If it is indeed a um, Vika Bulu. Quite like Fury Belting active. I don't mind the Sycamore here too much. We're just going to keep trying to dig for energy and good targets. There's a debate to putting down Lele just to be a power heater target, but I don't think it's strong. Bulu will always take energy off in this matchup, I think. There are all the Remoraids in the Brooklyn Hills. We did find energy though, which is good. Um, typically against Bulu, you want to find 190 HP Pokemon because 
it's more annoying for Boodoo. They need choice bands. Um, but we'll accept this. We can set up double Volk. What did we steam up? We steamed up once, so 60. I could actually Magnet Attach Active. Yeah, I like that. This sets up threats in a better way that I'd like. Because we've already committed the Fury Belt, so if we just had two Pokemon, both with uh, two Volks, both with two Fires, it basically meant we had to Guzma, and we don't have Guzma in hand, so we'd rather do it this way. An Ultra Ball would be the most nuts top deck for us. It is Vikabulu, so they had a very slow start here. They have a Field Blower. And they're going to pass it over. Not quite the uh, thing we wanted. They don't have a three card hand. Pahita is bad. So I guess we'll just try and tempo out. Don't think I want another Volk on board. I like having... Like we will eventually try and turtle. Um, how many fires would we have to hit? We only have one retrieval. Uh, to get value. Uh, I don't mind it actually. Do I mind it? Uh, we have so many better attackers. Let's just leave it. We'll draw into it now, I bet. <laughs> yeah, we drew into it. <laughs> We did get into the knockout though, which is good. We'll discard this. Grab ourselves the, sh the Sushi Master. No way, we haven't got knockout. We need to find an energy. Because we only have one. We need to... Oh no, we do have the knockout. Um, do I play it now just for more cards? It's our only one. Let's risk it. Try and hit a fire so that we can keep retrieval around for big steam ups. Okay, good. Getting some of these down is going to be good. Keeping a slot open for Lele. I like it. And it's a big steam artillery. Two prizes. Guzman's going to be nice. Especially if he has to discard with his Bulu. If he has to discard with Bulu this turn, we could Guzma his Vika Vault. Especially if he doesn't get another Grubbin down. <clears throat> Octillery again, showing its worth, proving itself. Manual attachment. Sycamore looks like they're digging for the candy. One recycler's already gone. That means they don't get it here, they're in a lot of trouble. There's Ultra Ball. Okay, there's a chance. They have to get rid of a grub in though. They do have Vika Bolt. Okay, we have a game. We have a game. I wonder if he has a third Grubbin in hand. Otherwise the Guzma play is going to be pretty solid. Or if he has Field Blower, that's also important. Two Blowers gone though. I doubt he has it. Yep, he's going to go for the big discard, so we're definitely going to Guzma here. Every time we Guzma Vika Vault here. Steam up. Attach. Thin a card, draw two. Let's 
good to me. I think we've pretty much cracked this game. That ultra ball was really quite bad, I think. I think they got rid of Grubber and Field Blower, and I think they needed both of those cards. <laughs> okay. We currently don't have a knockout on this Bulu. Any Ultra Ball. Do they go for Grubbin? Or do they go for Octillery, maybe? Just Grubbin, it looks like. Now I'm going to see the end. Okay, our hand was bonkers, but whatever. We have artillery. Our hand actually might be more bonkers now. Let me see choice band so they can hit us for 60 with horn attack. Let's see another ultra ball. Finally, Sushi Master has arrived. That's one of the issues with Vikabulu playing artillery. I'm a big fan of Oranguru because it's like a zero commitment way of finding a draw card, because you bridge it anyway. Um, whereas Octillery, you're wasting Ultra Balls that could be for Vika Volts on um, things that aren't Vika Volt. So let me just check if uh, Guzma's in here, because I've not been a good boy and I haven't been prize checking. Okay, we don't have Guzma. So our one switch is what we need this turn if I want to, uh, Steam up, steam up, knockout. Alternative is just to uh, go for Nitro Tank and set up the next few turns. Let's steam up once. I think I'll commit the energy attachment to the Nitro Tank play just because it's the safest route. Will Abyssal Hand before Sycamore because it sees a lot of cards. I just want to continue seeing lots of cards here. We can thin Baby Volk. I don't think we need him if we Nitro Tank. If we hit Switch Energy, we're still very happy here. We hit Switch Energy. Hype. Uh, we also have Elixir that we can play. So we... Steam up. Retreat, play a switch, throw down the elixir, and we're in really, really good shape now. Uh, we don't need to commit this, especially because we don't have Guzma left. Well, we could take it from prizes. Energy retrieval Guzma are the best two we could take here. Oh, so close, so close. Retrieval is like insane though. So, yeah, having to Skylab means we have game on board. Like, they have to Skylab because they need to guarantee Vika Vault. They can't afford to end and miss and just lose. So, it's reasonable. It's just we have it. Yeah, nice win for Volk. So, Vika Bulu and Guardi have been taken down so far. Let's see what our last game will be and uh, how it goes. I'm really enjoying Volk. I think it's a very... I really like the list. I think it's a very good list. The third Fury Belt is the only thing that's like tilting me. We haven't needed Fury Belt too much in our games. Like, Fury Belt could have won us the game against Guardi. Um, but we had already committed a Floatstone anyway, so it wasn't really a big deal. Um, but I, there's definitely so many times when the map is fixed to Fury Belt, I really want to wiggle a third in there. Answers on a postcard what your slot would be. We already have a lot of Pokemon. I'm thinking maybe we could cut to one Ho-Oh, but it's kind of greedy against, like, exactly Grandpa. I don't know. Still lots to figure out for this list, I think. Alright, let's try and... Uh... Try and load up this game. Both games we have not gone for Kiawe. So that's one of the biggest mistakes I see people, modern players of Volk do. I see a lot of people go ham and eggs for Kiawe 
And you have to restrain yourselves, folks. You have to know when to Kiawe and when to not. I saw Water Psychic, so this could be Nine Tails. Or it could be like a Wally Ninja. What would I rather have Floatstone on? I guess Volk. I'll definitely commit Remoraid before an N, but we'll keep the hand size high to give us high enough chances of them actually ending us. If we only have a four card hand, he's way less likely to end. Star you. So yeah, it probably is like a Wally, Wally Frogs. We'll see though. Yeah, looks to be Greninja. And the way we win against Greninja is actually having explosive turns. And we currently don't have that with our hand. They did this card and then. Okay. So the hand is very strong. And our hand is very weak. This is not good news. Okay. We just have to do what we can. We can't even thin a card. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, it's so bad. This is GG. Frog's already a grim matchup for us. But this is just horrible. Wow. Why would he end? He can only punish himself with an end there. And our hand was so bad. That's like the worst decision I've ever seen anyone make, ever. <laughs> punish him. Draw into frogs. Cry emoji. the punish get punished get punished that's what you get yes that's justice that's what that is uh so we actually need double steam up this turn huh so we'll still get this we need to baby bulk this turn there's like no other play that we have so we'll steam up Do this. So we need to hit Baby Volk energy. If we do that, we're in good shape, actually. Oh, we're in it. That was the worst N in the history of frogs. Okay, we're in this, maybe. So, so greedy. I mean, like, maybe he only had one Frogadier and maybe he's had horrible prizes, but I feel like that N was, like, there's no world where that N was correct, so it's fine. I'm gonna play another N. There is the Starmie. Greninja. Game is hard again. Got rid of a rare candy. The fact that he got rid of a rare candy means he probably does have access to more Frogadiers. <laughs> because otherwise he would really highly value candy. These have been some very strange plays. Okay, they are going to take the knockout though. I think I need to Turtonate this turn. We can get three energy into the discard straight away. We didn't draw into energy. Hmm. Scary times for all involved. Come on, Sushi Master. Senpai your way to Senpai Stardom. How many waters have gone? There's none in the discard for his Stami, so maybe there's a chance.
Yes, 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 yes. Okay. It's not full value, but it's what we have to go for here. Um, we're in the game simply because of his really bad duplicates. I'm still not willing to say it was bad luck <laughs> because he end <laughs> and he also got rid of a rare candy. So it's just a, uh, I don't know, it could be prizes. It still could be prizes. We'll learn more when he starts putting down more frog ears now, this turn. So, Choice Man means Moonlight Slash is getting a knockout. Does he have the break as a stretcher? So that's an immediate... Oh, he's not going for it immediately. Interesting. He's going to Brooklyn Hill that froggy straight back. Access to Guzma would make me sad this turn, but also, like, he doesn't have much else going for him. <clears throat> Gonna see the lily to draw four. Very reasonable. Gonna see an ultra ball. Does he go for the break here, or does he go for a frogadier? I think it has to be frogadier, really. like a max rarity frogs apart from one sad n they went for the break why are they shurikening i guess the ho-o -oh. Yeah. Shuriken on Ho-Oh. -Oh. And just a retreat. Okay. Preserving that is smart. But we top decked. Huh. Very good. Also top up the hand. We need to chain Guzma really. But for now, we can Phoenix Burn. Wow. That was like terrible Greninja play. <laughs> that was really the end like the only bad decision was the end really, I think. Like actually just outright never correct. I think other ones were debatable. Um the retreat there also didn't feel great. I think he's actually safer staying active and shadow stitching. Because if I have, like, then I have to somehow move Turtonator without uh, Guzma. He gave me, like, three more outs. He was much better off stitching the active. It also got a lot of damage on the board. He could have even taken prizes. Yeah, a lot of strange decisions there. But hey, uh, I'm out of time. <laughs> so uh, we beat everything in our path. And I think the list is proving its worth. It has versatility with all of its attackers. I think the counts are all fine, apart from Fury Belt, which we need to add in a third somehow. Let's just play 61 cards, why not? Uh, but yeah, I think maybe trying to work uh, cut down like one ho because I think Turtle is the better card. Uh, maybe that's the option. Uh, we could even debatably go to 1-1 one, one Octillery, play one Stretcher, and then play third Fury Belt. That could also be our slot. A little bit greedy, a little bit scary against uh, prizes and such, but I've really enjoyed developing artillery as quickly as possible, but maybe that's the thing to explore. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about Volk. Would you play artillery in this meta? Would you stick with Starmie? Do you like Salazzle? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. What are your thoughts on Kiawe? Um, I didn't use it in any one of my games, but we didn't come up against the matchups where it was important. 
there are certainly matchups where Kiawe will be a winner for you. So bear that in mind. He is a great option still. And uh, yeah, give me your thoughts down below. Let me know what else you want to be profiled in standard. And uh, for now, guys, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please leave a like to the video if you did. But I will see you guys next time. Cheers.